Hi, good afternoon. Welcome back to Mike Makes It. In the garage, we've got something a little bit more unusual to what we normally have. And it's the food mixer. It's the Kenwood Electronic KM200. Um, my wife inherited it from my mother. So I guess it's probably 25 years old. But it's got lots of features you don't normally f see on the cheaper mixers nowadays. So I'm going to take a look at it. It's got an issue. It let out the magic smoke, according to the wife. So um, it's not switched on at the socket yet. I'm going to put that on the max. I'm going to switch it on, and we'll see if there's any smoke left in it. Um, failing. Well, we're still going to dismantle it, but here we go. No smoke yet. The speed controller seems to be working all right. Now I've got a bit of a, a bit of a nift going on now. No smoke still. These are the accessory covers you've got on the top. But no, we're still still okay. No cooking, literally no cooking at the minute. Yes. Just turn it down a bit. It, it's a bit niffy. I don't think no, it will work like that. Let's keep it going, just see what happens. Well, it looks like all the magic smoke's been used up. But it does smell a bit niffy, so... No explosions. But let's get it to bits. And uh, we'll see what's happening. Okay, we're off the tripod, so forgive me if it's a bit shaky. The mix is upside down, as you can see. I've undone two screws here. And that's released this little bracket which hooks around this arm which I try to get out for you there's an arm here which there's a button release on the far side here which allows the two halves to separate on a hinge mechanism uh, just appreciate it's upside down I'm sure you will um, and then there's a cover you can take off which is this plastic cover once that arm's out the way you just undo the cables a little bit of twisting away it'll come i had visions the motor was going to be burnt out but here's the um, control board the speed controller and i've just had a little look at that because very often you have things that go bang on you or swell often electrolytics if you look at them they they'll swell um, because they failed uh, but if you look at this there's a couple of x2 style capacitors in here one two this one looks good this one at the back if I get the cable that's hiding it out of the way here let's get the little pointing stick in there that's all blackened and expanded so that caps failed motor controller must still be working because the motors going round and I can vary the speed on it uh, there used to be a kit apart for about 30 pound you could get for this particular model and others similar in the range which would be a kit of two or three capacitors transistor uh, the power transistor here uh, I think it included some grease for the motor or sorry grease for the gearbox which is here where I'm tapping which you can't see there you go um, the gearbox is in this area obviously it's upside down I think it even included some motor brushes which would be in here now it's had some use it's had not not had excessive use so what I'm going to do now um, is get online order two or three capacitors up 
there's an old electrolytic at the back there i'll probably get a new one of them i won't worry too much about the semiconductors the, the two transistors i'm going to leave those but these capacitors if they are a quarter of a century old then yeah they've probably seen better days uh we'll swap those out the mount uh, mounting for the motor the rubber bushes on there i can still move the motor i don't know if you can see that uh, the motor is still fairly compliant it's not hanging out uh, apparently that's another problem with the km200s the motor mounts fail and the motor drops out of the machine that's not happened here so i'm not being cheapskate i'm just going to order just the capacitors for now put it back together and i suspect it's all going to be singing and dancing one thing i do want to get though if you look on the bottom of the machine i think there's five uh one two three four five this is where they used to be hammer in feet see there's a little pin in the middle there. i don't know if we're probably going to go out of focus there's a little pin right down the middle now you would put the rubber foot into the the hole here and push a pin into it and that would lock the foot on the base but they've long since left the building so i don't know if i'm going to be able to get them if not i'll have to spin some up on the lathe but yeah five feet four capacitors a cup of tea and i think we'll have this back up and running so uh you know the magic of video i'll come back in two minutes with the capacitors and we'll refit them oh here we go direct from ebay surprise me there's quite a few uh, suppliers actually still sell kits a bit for these uh, kenwood mixers now i've opted for a kit that's got five feet i think it's a triac not a transistor as i said earlier triac um two of the x2 capacitors for noise suppression and there's a resistor there now all i'm going to do today because uh, a bit more involved with the brushes and as far as i know we didn't have any issues with the with 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 that side of the motor uh time will tell of course i'm just going to change the five feet and the two x2 capacitors one of those capacitors is in the mixer now that's the one that's failed so uh, that's why i'm actually here in the first place but there's the feet i thought i'd have a problem getting those like i say i've took one out but there's a little pin there that certainly on the original ones you'd nail down the center and i think uh, the plan is i'm going to do the same here you know, it nails down the center and mounts into a hole in the chassis of the actual mixer now i'll show you how i got the the, the last one out um a bit not not really medieval but i'm using a hammer you can see here let me just zoom in a little bit on that so probably take us out of shot there that's very very hard rubber it used to be a rubber of some sort anyhow that's rock hard so uh, what i've got to do is get some of that top out so i can pull a nail out this in there and i found because the rubber's very hard it's working to my advantage just have a little tippity tap you can see there's uh, big chunks of the x rubber coming out and if i can uh, just do it gently otherwise you're going to bust the chassis now i might be able to get in and pop that nail out it's like a nailing rivet need to go a little bit further just do it gently there's five on here to do um we'll get this one out then i'll go and do uh do the other three that are left then we can get on and change in those capacitors just get a flat bladed screwdriver now just rock that rivet just a little bit because it is actually nailed into the metalwork sort of goes in and twists almost like a screw going in but once you've got it there you go I th well i think so there see let's just get that on shot you can see there's um like ooh, nearly lost it serrations running up it so as you tap it in you tap the head in it'll turn and bite into the metal work of the mixer so i'll go and get the other three out then we can crack on and get in uh, the two capacitors on the control board changed so i'm going to take uh, the control board out now it looks as if there's just a couple of screws 
but they're on springs so um, be careful you don't lose any bits and bobs when you're undoing it and hopefully we can just turn it over and uh, get to the capacitors just a standard bolt there and a spring and a bracket it's going to be the same on the other side all right there we go don't know how easy it's going to be to turn that over though you've got a micro switch here that uh, powers the device up when you turn the lever to switch it on which is what you kind of would expect i guess let's just turn that round there's a micro switch i don't think it's screwed in there'll be a clip on there but because this is quite old i want to be a little bit careful i don't want to start breaking the plastic off um uh -huh. there we go and we've got plastic base on it so i'm gonna to have to strip the plastic base off to get to the the back side of that um, i'm wondering if i didn't even have to take that plastic out uh the, this assembly but you live and learn this is the first one i've done uh, there's a couple of screws in there i'll get that out we'll expose the bottom of the pcb um and uh, yeah get those caps out here we go okie dokie got the back off we've exposed the printed circuit board interestingly there's an inductor here two of the pins from the inductor are coming close to a magnet that's actually on um, the back side of the motor so as the motor turns uh, the mag magnet is going to influence uh, what what the inductor is doing in the sense of feedback and I notice when you turn this mechanism which is a speed adjuster this circuit board lifts up and down hence the springs and the two screws this side so that in effect is your speed adjustment uh, in the sense of these two prongs move a different distance from the magnet so the the feedback uh, in the coil is going to alter the the speed of the motor i've got a circuit diagram and that's horribly described um, but that's how the speed control is working on here um, altering the influence on the inductor on here that i think is a triac as i said earlier so um, it's firing that at uh, varying speeds depending on the angle of the pcb so if i put them screws in too low you're going to have different speed to what you had before now i have actually measured the distance between the bottom of the board um, and the the metal chassis of the motor and that was 17 millimeters so i'm going to put that back exactly as i found it so we should be good on to changing the capacitors two capacitors and two replacements i have uh, 0.1 microfarad and 0.15 microfarad so hopefully the holes in the board are going to marry up with the two caps i've got here so we'll turn the board over and unsolder the caps i'm going to take out the 0.15 one first that didn't fail it was a 0.1 microfarad but nevertheless i'm going to see if we can just heat the pin up underneath and pop the cap out um, after about 25 years of use this printed circuit board is in really good condition I think they've uh, put conformal coating on it as well to uh, protect it from ingress and moisture etc now that's not coming out as e easily as I'd like got a little solder sucker here so we'll see uh, what we can do with that of course very awkward yeah i can see they've bent the leg over just to mechanically hold it in the board as well I'll just heat it up give it a little wobble to one side that straighten the leg out and hopefully there you go right now that one 
although it's 25 years old, and decided to leave the building. That is actually still functional. But uh, let's get the new 0.15 mic in. If I can read the numbers on the side, well, uh, there you go, 0.15. What I usually do with these components, new or old, I just have a pair of tweezers, just strike up the legs a few times. It just uh, reveals new metal, takes any oxide off, and uh, generally gives you a fairly good joint. Yeah, okay, see, the, the, it is slightly different, the pin outs on here. You've got, uh, if we put them side by side, let's get that in shot for you. You can see, we can get it about right, there you go. So what I'm gonna do with the new one, I'm gonna get a pair of long nose pliers and just form the legs slightly, rather than just pushing it in and having the legs like this, like a TV aerial sticking out. Uh, I'm going to form it with a pair of, uh, as I said, uh, flat nose pliers just to uh, make it look a little bit better. So we'll get that soldered, we'll get that bent, get it soldered into the board. There's a cap. I want to just simply bend this leg out. But what I don't want to do is just grab hold of the leg and bend it because it's probably going to fracture away from the component. So what I usually do, hold it like so then i'll bend the leg so there's no stress put on the component itself a bit more so the the leg is standing off from the component a bit but no stress was put on the component if you're not careful you're going to rip this leg off they are bonded into uh, the device fairly well, um, but I find it because um, you bend them too close to the body and the leg breaks off. Uh, you, you might get away with it, you might not, but hey, uh, a couple of mil standoff on the board is fine. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'll uh, bend the leg another 90 degrees to give the right spacing, solder that into the board and get the other component out. And I'm probably gonna have to do the same on that one with the legs. But yeah, I'll come back when the two components are in. Okay, I've put the two caps back in here. I've done them in such a way you can easily read the values on them. So if I'm back in here in like 10 years time, I'll know which is a 0.15 and which is a 0.1. If you put it the other way around, it might be more difficult to see. But that's all back in. I've gapped it uh, exactly the same as it was. As you can see, you turn, the, this is on the left-hand side, a little bit off shot there. Let me just turn the camera around a tad and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is a speed controller. You turn it, the micro switch activates to put power into the system. But see how the board's moving up and down? Now that's what's going to alter the speed. And the inductor I was talking about, there's two windings in there. Uh, basically it's like an inductive pickup from the motor uh, as it spins or the, the, the magnet on the motor as it spins. So uh, yeah, that spins, it senses the rotation um, and fires a thyristor, a uh, triac I believe, not thyristor. You want to call it a transistor, they're all T's, but I, I think it's a, a triac. I've not replaced that, only those two capacitors, so uh, I may be back in here again. But I'll reassemble that, put it back together. Uh, I'm gonna push the feet in then, uh, five feet into that. I, I haven't put those in yet. But yeah, here we go. All right, that's all back together. There's a bag of feet and a few other bits, but it's only the feet we want. So this is how I think you should be putting them in. There we go. Pop the foot in. I think they call these self-tapping rivets. That's what the dentist called them when he put one in my head. So, uh, although he didn't use a hammer. I'm gonna set just a, a punch there. I'm not gonna hammer it in too hard, just wanna tap it, so excuse the noise. And that's, that's it, job done. Then you're gonna come out nice and compliant. Gonna do the other f uh, four, five feet in total. Turn around the other way and we'll see if it makes a noise and doesn't give out smoke, we'll see.
there's the old food mixer back together the km 200 is plugged in switched on let's turn the knob see what happens well seems a success that the, the parts for this are only 14 pound that included the brushes there's different levels you can get from ebay just the brushes just the feet etc etc but that 14 pound bag gave me the triac a resistor a couple of caps and the brushes only fitted the caps like i said they're the ones that have blown up i'll hand the mixer back to the wife let her do a bit of cooking try it for a few weeks and if it's all good great if not i'll have to revisit but uh, it's all looking good um please give me a thumbs up if you felt the video useful and informative it, it just gives me that little boost to go ahead, go ahead and do a few other videos but yeah thumbs up would be great thanks for watching